Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here with Kashif Hussein. He is go-to-market leader for wireless mobility at Viavi Solutions. Good morning, Kashif. Good morning, Martha. Viavi is in a good position to help operators through many steps of the process of deploying outdoor small cells. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'd like to start with the process of helping operators figure out where they may need an outdoor small cell. Yeah, that's a good question, Martha. Thank you for that. So first of all, I mean, um, so just to give uh, some background into Weavi, right? So what we look at when we are talking about cellular network, and especially with respect to where, uh, I mean, 4G, LT advanced and uh, and HetNet basically heterogeneous networks are going right. We offer an end-to-end solution, and by which we we mean is not just analyzing the core or just the RF link, or not not only about the installation and commissioning aspect of it. We actually look at it from an end-to-end perspective, and our, our view is basically at every aspect of the network deployment lifecycle. So whether it is from the design and planning perspective or from the deployment perspective or validation and optimization perspective, operators need to be, I mean, very careful because what can happen that you may in, make investments and you may not get the I mean, proper return for it. So along those lines, you asked me the question about the planning and design phase of it. So where do I put my small cell? Because I'm trying to resolve a problem with a small cell. Just like we talked, uh, I mean, um, at some point before, um, basically in a heterogeneous network, you want to ensure a couple of things. The small cell that I'm deploying, it is, is it resolving the problem that I'm facing? Meaning, is it a capacity problem that I'm trying to resolve? Or is it a performance problem that I'm trying to resolve for a certain area? So if you look at a, a certain network, let's say a small metropolitan area, now in that there can be certain pockets where my RF coverage from a macro perspective may be there, but when during the time, uh, during a busy hour or time when there is a, a peak traffic demand, my macro cell may not be able to handle the whole, all the traffic. For example, take a small, uh, take a school in a neighborhood. Now at, let's say three o'clock to four o'clock, there are two, three schools in the neighborhood close together, ca- causing a lot of congestion, especially as you know, kids nowadays, they all have phones and they're always on Twitter and, on, on, and Facebook and Instagram, what have you, all these applications, right? Suddenly there's a, I mean, if you look at it, a, a traffic jump at that time. Now, how do I resolve that? How do I figure that out that I can basically offer a better quality of service from an operator perspective? The best thing to do is identify actually where I need to put that small cell. To do that, I need to have a better assessment of that area. How do I get there? Okay, so solutions like Ariso Geo, which actually capture the network traffic, help you identify those hotspots. Once you know where those hotspots are, meaning you know where your capacity is getting maxed out, where your performance is getting degraded in those hours. Now you have given yourself a a certain dimensions to go and look for a small cell location. Now, it's not that easy just what you saw in the, on a, on basically on a map or something and you can get a location. So we talked about a couple of more things. One is um, actually the accessibility aspect of it. Meaning, do I have power there? Do I have backhaul there, right? And do I have the ability to even put a cell there? Maybe there are certain restrictions, right? Uh, once we have that, now the next thing is, okay, I mean, where do I put my small cell to make, get the maximum from a quality of service perspective? So you can get a couple of options in that regard. So the tool identifies a sort of a search ring, right? So that if the ideal spot's not available, you still see what other options you have, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just like a macro network, right? In a macro yeah. network, when you design a network using a design tool, what you do is uh, basically, I mean, give some search rings out. And then basically the, the folks uh, in the field, they go out there, try to figure out what the best location is. You take those locations, I mean, where you can possibly put a cell site, and then you put it back into your design tool and see if I get the maximum coverage. Similar to that, you will have to do a similar type of analysis. Now, granted, you have to be careful because in metro areas and places like that, you may have some restrictions because you just cannot put a huge tower or something. So you have to utilize whatever the street furniture may be, whatever the small I mean, poles may be available and whatnot. And yes, they may differ here and there, but, but overall, I think the job can still be done. You may have to do a little bit more investment, meaning you have to do some cell splits or things like that, but overall, it can be captured. All right, so say that there, there is a location that has the power, has the backhaul, and, and will help the network, and the operator moves forward and deploys 
a cell in that location, what's the next step to make sure that the impact is as hoped? Yeah, so again, um, the next step in every network life cycle, doesn't matter if it's a small cell, uh, doesn't matter if it's a macro cell, is to ensure that um, when you deploy it, you have uh, tested and validated all the aspects of a cell site, by which I mean, whether your I mean, configuration, whether your backhaul is configured correctly, you have provided the right quality of service parameters uh, for your backhaul. Your RF is clean, meaning if you don't have any interference issues or anything like that. Um, when you are building the site, you have validated all the connectors, you have validated all basically the jumpers, and if it's a fiber, you have got, made sure all the connections are clean and whatnot, right? So every step of validation, I mean, we, we as Viavi, offer a solution which covers every aspect of this deployment. Doesn't matter whether it's an ethernet, whether it doesn't matter if it's fiber and what have you, right? So all that stuff, if you have validated that, then in that case, guess what? You can basically do a good job in capturing the area that you wanted to serve. One key thing that I would say, uh, anecdotally what we have seen, that typically when you look at the performance impact, I mean the negative performance impact of a cell site, almost 60% of it is related to cell site issues locally at the cell site, by which I mean an antenna problem, maybe a connector problem, a cable problem, things like that. Rarely it's an external source of interference, but they do exist as well. But my point is, if you haven't captured that, guess what, you will not be offering the level of service that you want to. If you think about it this way, um, if my signal in an interference noise ratio changes by, let's say, I mean 10 dB, that can literally uh, actually reduce my capacity by half. So that's why doing the validation at the right time saves, the, saves a lot of money in the long run. And it actually, I mean, does a better uh, I mean, job in terms of providing the best quality of service. So this is interesting because people have said to us that individuals who know how to climb utility poles are qualified to install small cells, but you're talking about uh, using some test equipment that sounds like you might need to, to have a little bit of training, right? Yeah, ac actually, the job has changed significantly over the years, right? Back in the day when you used to have just coax cables and I mean, you, I mean, you will have a tower erector, a guy who goes out there and connects some cables and antennas and whatnot. Now you see there's a lot more fiber getting deployed and our radios are much more integrated when it comes down to small cells and they are very close to the antenna and whatnot. Yeah, in that case, you need more uh, specific, uh, more, I would say, a better training of, uh, of your technicians, but Viavi is working in a direction where actually the requirement from, from our technicians is going down. How we are doing that, what we are doing, we are building in an automation and basically using automation, we are building processes in which you can actually literally write mops ahead of time load it up into your tool. Actually, somebody back in the office wrote the map so that the guy who goes out there in the field, he just has to follow literally the directions on the screen that he sees to do the testing. Because we understand these things are challenging, especially if you think about the number of cells that the, I mean, the operators have to deliver. I mean, we are not talking about hundreds of cell sites anymore. We're talking about thousands of cell sites that you will have to deploy in a year. So the scale is a problem, right? So the, along with the scale, how do you find the resources to do these things? For that, automation is the answer, and that's where we are going with. So yes, the tests are more difficult, but how do you make it easy is through the process of automation, through the process in which your data that you're collecting can tell you right there whether it passed or failed. And that data is uploading into, in the, in the, into the network, basically in the cloud, where people can actually validate. Let's say you have a supervisor who can check and see, yes, everything was tested properly and whatnot. So building automation, helping the technicians and engineers in the field to, uh, to do these jobs much more, I would say, quickly and easily. That seems like it's very important. Okay. And the final step, I think, is optimization once the, the cell is up and running, right? Definitely. Optimization and I would say one more thing is maintenance, which is a kind of constantly optimizing the network and ensuring that. So basically where you have solutions which are actually constantly running in the core, validating the user performance, not just depending on the type of application that you're using. It's not just about voice anymore and just data, right? So now you need to understand different application. For example, you're using Facebook or you're using the messenger part of Facebook. So I mean, meaning how do your quality of service is set up for one for best effort and one is basically for low latency. So things like that have to be understood. 
For that, you need um, different, I wouldn't say tools. I would say it's kind of a solution that you need end-to-end -to, -end to understand, I mean, basically how your network is behaving. From an Airlink optimization perspective, there are multiple tools. Like I talked about Ariso, which actually gives you a real-time view of the users, how they are actually experiencing in the network. And it actually gives you an indication of the performance on an application basis, meaning how's your Facebook application working? I mean, how was your WhatsApp working? So things like that, you will have to understand. So each user, each application, you can see how that's going or in aggregate the applications? It, it actually, you can uh, pull an application layer, but if you want to see a particular UE, you can do that too. Of course, okay. there are so many users out there, right? But you can okay. look at an application layer too. Uh, but, the, but the idea behind it is, uh, is to, again, automate this thing meaning you don't want to send drive teams all the time uh, out there because it can be very expensive. So from, uh, from your network, you can actually monitor the performance of the network and you can see how your network is behaving. So that's the first step. And if you see problems, then you can go into the other layers. I mean, where, through our Excite, I mean, software solution that we, we offer actually, which actually can tell you if there was a problem in the core of the network. Let's say if you had any QoS parameters or Ether Assure can tell you if there was a backhaul problem. So th there are solutions out there that we are working on to ensure, like I said, automation is the key because in the future, I just don't see, I mean, manually, I mean, test, I mean, checking out and testing each and every cell site and every parameter, what have you. It's not possible, so. Right, and, and the time is really important too. Absolutely, absolutely. To, um, and the operators are going to need to not only see these problems, but also address them almost in real time, don't you think? Absolutely, and that's why we are investing heavily. I mean, we have our GeoSon solution that is coming out. There are SON solutions which we all know uh, out there. They are performing the basic functionalities uh, now, for example, like uh, uh, automating the PCI deployment, I mean, allocation and what have you, right? So those guys, uh, I mean, neighbor list automation and whatnot. So, but it has to go to the next level in my mind where you have, you see a problem in the network. If I have to, let's say, increase the power on a certain side versus the other side, how do I manage handoffs and whatnot? So those parameters need to be optimized. And you will see in the future that SON type applications will come out and, and the work will continue in that direction. All right, Kasha Hussain, go to market leader for wireless mobility at Viavi Solutions. Thank you very much for being Thank here. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Martha.